Oh well. Okay, so for this one, um, we're doing a test. So this is chapter 9. And the mean number of eggs, which means we're doing the mean, not the proportion. That means we use this Excel file. Hypothesis testing for mean. The mean number of eggs per person eaten in the United States is 232. Do college students eat a different number of eggs than the average American? The 58 college students surveyed averaged 214 eggs per person and their standard deviation was 79.2. What can we conclude with alpha being 0.01? Now, first of all, because the standard deviation um, is from your sample, even though your sample is large, if the standard deviation is not from the population, it's still a t-test. So that's why the study is a t-test. Sample size was over 30. It was 58. But the standard deviation was from the sample, <clears throat> not the population, so it's a t-test. Now your null hypothesis is always equal to, and we're using a mean, so it's mu, not p. Proportion would be p. So mu equals, and then what was believed to be the average, 232. The next one, it'll be mean and 232. The only thing that changes is the middle value. So you want to see if they want to test greater than, less than. In this one, it says, do, do college students eat a different number of eggs? So they're saying a different number, not more eggs or less eggs. Since it's just a different, it will be not equal to. Oh, I guess we're going to that. So to find the test statistic, we know it's going to be a t-value. And we plug in these values here. So sample size is n. The mean number of eggs per person eaten in the United States is 232. Oh, sample size was 58. 58. Population mean. We were not given. We were given a sample mean. Oh, population mean would be what we're testing, 232. The sample mean was right here, 214. Standard deviation, 79.2. Alpha was 0.01. So our test statistic, negative 1.731 right there. The p-value. Now we were testing two tail because not equal to, then it could be greater or less than. So it's a two tail. So that's the point oh eight 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 eight. They said four decimal places, so point eight eight nine. The p value is. Then you want to compare it to alpha. So our p value was point oh eight. This is 0 0.01, so the p-value was greater than alpha, if p is the second one. Greater than alpha, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Fail to reject, because the p-value, 0 0.08, was greater than 0 0.01. Then for this one, um, thus the final conclusion, the data suggests that the population mean is not significantly different because it failed. There's just a statistically insignificant evidence to conclude that the population mean number of eggs um, per year is different than 232. Interpret the p-value. The population mean number of eggs consumed by college students per year 
and if another 58 college students are surveyed, there would be, and then you write your p-values a percent, so 8.9 percent chance that the sample mean for these would be less than or greater than. So it's giving you the percent chance of it being not equal to. Um, interpret the level of significance. Level of significance was 1%. And so it would be if the population mean number of eggs consumed by college students was 232 and another 58 college students were surveyed, there would be a 1% chance we would end up falsely concluding it. So that tells you your probability of being false. There was another one. Um, this one. Now for this one, we were not given the mean and standard deviation. We need to find them. So to find them, the average house has 12 paintings on its wall. Is the mean smaller for houses owned by teachers? The data shows the result of a survey of 14 teachers who were asked how many paintings they have in their house. Assume that the distribution of the population is normal. Okay, so we have um, 14 values. For the study, we should use a, still a t-test because our sample size is small. And we do not have a standard deviation from the population. Um, the first one, you take your mean equal to and the value they gave, which was 12. So this is always the equal to 12. The next one, it said, is the mean smaller? So smaller, we're testing less than. So mean and 12 stays the same. And then this becomes less than because we want to test if teachers have less paintings. <clears throat> now we want to find the test statistic and we said it would be T. So to plug in your values, we did a sample of 14 teachers. So this is 14. This is the mean from the null hypothesis, which was 12. Now, this mean and standard deviation was not given. So you have to find it. Whether you use a calculator, do it by hand, or you can do it right here on Excel. To do it on Excel, you first need to enter the data. So 9, 11, 9, 11, 12, 9, 11. Uh, 15 minus 14. Okay. So I entered my data. Now to find the average, you can use a formula. Equal and type average. And see the second one here? This will find the average of your data. Double click it. And then you just highlight your numbers. So you left click and drag down and highlight the numbers and then hit enter and there's your average standard deviation put equals st you can see right here when i'm typing equals st now we want there's two standard deviations we want the sample because this is a sample double click it again highlight your data and hit enter. And there's your standard deviation. And then alpha was 0 0.01. And there's your t-value. Negative 2.197. 
the p-value uh, we were testing less than less points left so it's this one 0 0.02 Three, four, right there. And then we want to test if the p-value is less than or greater than alpha. So the p-value is 0 0.02, which is greater than 0 0.01. So this is greater than. If the p-value is greater than, reject the null hypothesis. So. Oh, sorry, I didn't read it all. Fail to reject because it's greater than. Right here. Um, and if you fail to reject, then your conclusion is the data suggests that the population mean number of paintings <clears throat> is not significantly less than 12. So with a 0.01. <clears throat> so there's insufficient evidence to conclude that the population proportion for teachers is less than 12. What the p-value tells you is the population mean number of paintings for teachers. And if you survey another 14 teachers, then there's 2.34% because they change your p-value to a percent. Chance the sample mean would be less. And interpret the significance level. That uses the 0.01 written as a percent. If the population mean number of paintings at teacher's house is 12, and if you survey 14 teachers, then there's a 1% chance that we would um, end up false. 